What's up, my beloved? What's up, my beloved? I got a sounds. Smell delicious. Mm. Beat love, beat love, beat love three times. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. You guys, today we are in Atlanta. We just got here and we just got some food from the Band Dope restaurant. I don't know. Somebody told me on We Go Live to go over here. And I'm telling you guys, it's amazing. The concept is beautiful. Check this out.
Yeah, right, right. We went somewhere. We're, no, no. I wanted to check that out the video. Y'all checked it out? Oh, Did my y'all like it? Gosh. Good. Anyways, we're going to eat, y'all. We ain't we're gonna tried the food now. yet. We ain't so. tried the food yet. This is called crack. Crack wings, y'all. Crack. What y'all know about that crack? And it looks like it got crack on it, too. You said it's got a little sugar or something on it? Yeah, it's supposed to have sugar and pow uh, something, season or something. So we're going to do a thumbnail and then we're going we gonna to say grace. That's right. Thumbnail. My husband will say grace whenever okay. he wants to. You going to do the thumbnail first? Thumbnail. Yeah. Same old, same old, y'all. Right, right, right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food and drink that we're about to receive. We ask, Father, that you bless it, that it may be nourishing to our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I say amen again. You know, you guys, uh, happy birthday to Shannon Jr. Shout out to him. Rest in peace. Um, y'all know he passed away. Uh, got uh, his life taken away from him too soon. Last this this past summer, I think. So you guys, shout out to his birth. His birthday was today. So rest in peace, Shannon Jr. And also, shout out to Sincere, 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 Sincere. I know he watches me all the time. He's a he's a uh, young boy. <coughs> I love him. He loves to watch my videos. So shout out to Sincere. If you watching, shout out to you. And you be good at home to your mommy, okay? Be good. Be a good boy. All right, that was nice. Y'all get you some of this if you ain't got it. Can you see that? That has spray. Uh, it's not focusing. Anyway, it's antibacterial spray. Um, that stuff is bomb, y'all. 72% alcohol. I think they said the limit is 70%. So, it's good for the road. It's definitely good for the road. My Keep yourself safe out here. Mm. Keep yourself safe. That is different. Mm. Sugar and spice and everything yeah, nice. Yeah, sugar. That's got sugar oh, on wings. it. Mm. Sugar on the wingy dingy. It's actually good. Is it? Mm -hmm. You're going you to start putting sugar on the wingy dingy? It's a powder sugar, y'all. Put a little powder sugar on the wingy dingy? Mm-hmm. That's where it's at, huh? And they have a concept that they call it crack wings. Mm -hmm. Crack. And it looks like you got crack on it. How do you know it? that? Because you used to smoke it. You know Remember? what? <laughs> <laughs> it won't be funny. How you know that? Well, you know, when somebody say something, you always got to ask. Throw that in there. When you walk into a joke, it would just be unfair if I didn't throw it out there. Yeah. You know? I know y'all see him, Nate. Sometimes he have his days. What, my tea days? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm busy in the gym right now, though. He's doing really well. Okay. Yeah, I got a corny hot dog too. They sell Detroit corn dog. I'll show y'all what we working with. Mm. Once we do this house tour, whenever all this stuff comes. Mm -hmm. They going for the band though. It's a nice concept. Mm-hmm. I was looking at that wall he of uh, <laughs> black actors. Mm-hmm. And I told her, I said, we all know who the names of the actors are, but I said, can you name the character? Mm -mm. Can you name the character that they played in those movies? Like, obviously, Debo. You knew Debo. Debo jumped out. You knew, um, <clears throat> what was it, Q from uh, Juice? His name is uh -huh. Q, right? No, Bishop. His name is Bishop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about Set It Off? I don't like know people. what her name was. Me either. That one got me. Ooh, this is good. These crack wings. Y'all, y'all come here, try the crack wings. It's different because it's got. Sugar, powdered sugar on it with some seasoning. You want to taste one? No. It's good though. Mm -mm. You would never think that would go together. And I got them extra crispy. You gotta get you gotta get your wingy dingies extra crispy because mm. once they throw the sauce on it or or whatever, you lose that crisp. 
So if you get them extra crispy, it just makes it better. Mm -hmm. I do do that. Mm. Very good. How's it going? Hmm? It's good. And y'all, I got 10 strawberry heat. Mm-hmm. And yeah, 10. Have you tasted those yet? Mm-mm. 10 rats. That's next, y'all. And then I got the Fuego. Fuego. What's Fuego? Fuego. You know what Fuego is. If you want to live, you ain't black. Huh? You hear me? I believe you said that. <laughs> I mean, I'm that. It's a joke, y'all. What that is? Still huh. don't know. We know what Fuego is? Fuego. Fuego. Oh. Listen, I never know what she's talking about. Cause he ain't said right. <laughs> it's Fuego. I heard Fuego. And so, Fuego is a Spanish word, and I'm For thinking what? of, I think it means outside or something like that, or out, something like that. I don't know. Why we can't see I your food? You got. I mean down here. Um. So I can't hold my food and dip and all that stuff. Dip, baby. Anyway, so. That's why I didn't know what she was talking about, y'all. But I say fuego. Um, what's I gonna say? Y'all ready for love? Oh my goodness! He be watching that. He be watching that, girl. Watching Ready for Love and uh, put a ring on it. It's good, y'all. Mm-hmm. And my shows I'm into right now. Ready for love? Put and a ring both, on it. They both don't own y'all. They both don't own. I also been wa I've been watching this uh, Netflix uh, Marvel series called The Iron Fist. Mm, I don't know about that. I've been watching it. I've been watching. Uh, listen, I'm starved for movies. Are you? Yeah, like the whole movie theater process is just oh, oh man. Oh yeah, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, I miss. Movie you know, I miss theaters. Marvel and all them types of shows. You know, I mean, movies. I'm just. I'm just starving right now. I'm starving for anything. A bowling alley. <laughs> a skating rink. I go ice fishing at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I fish I fishing looks uh uh mm -hmm. a tight. I mean look uh, appealing now. I'm just I'm just starving for like doing something, you know. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. Because that's why I've really been thinking about Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Problem is, even if you do have a bunch of people over, like we were talking about this, because they were talking on, on the news about how to have mm -hmm. safe Thanksgiving gatherings. And they said, you can have it outside, rent a tent, and, and they had heaters in the tent, and it was like... That's a big deal, but then I was like, okay. These people that had big houses, y'all. Oh yeah. And yo, my my, my husband was like, can't nobody be said, doing. Everybody ain't got everybody no house like that. Everybody ain't got no big house like that. Be out there, buddy, up in there. Yeah. And I said, maybe that is. Okay, true. so you get the you get the rented tent, and it's all nice and everything. You get the heaters and all that other stuff. But <laughs> what you gonna do? So. Rent a porta potty too? Nobody going in the house. You know, after you eat and everything, people it gets dark. Sit people gonna want to go and sit and chill, go in the house. Watch a movie. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you Actually, know. you know what? We really could do it big, y'all. Yeah, I think about that. You just gotta. I'm just saying. Look, we're trying to think about solutions for everybody. They're talking about renting tents and all this other stuff, and that's cool. But. Not everybody in the world can do that. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's backyard is even big enough. And on top of that, Ooh. like I was thinking to myself just now. Look at that. That's that corn dog. That's that corn dog. Mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself just now, like, um, you know, people could do, you know, project a movie on a, on a house or whatever. You know, and we could watch movies. And I was thinking to myself, everybody ain't got no projector. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, Baby, everything it. that you think you could possibly try to do, it's like so... I know you didn't think of that, though. So much cost. 
Yeah, I've seen people do it. I've seen people do it. Real projector. Mm-hmm. Mm, I didn't remember that. I remember Darius was a kid. He went over to his friend's house and they did that. Mm. Okay, everybody else? Mm-hmm. And they had a movie. Twenty dollars for you, twenty dollars for you, twenty dollars <laughs> for you. Yo. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's how it used to be when we were, we were. Listen, everybody remember Mike Tyson fights from back yeah. in the day. Listen, you paid your money to watch the fight. One person would get it on pay per view, and everybody you pay a cover charge to get in. Don't go to the bathroom. Yeah. Fight was over. <laughs> fight was over. The big blink of eye. That's what you gotta do. Hey, people pay a cover mm-hmm. charge. It's good. I don't, the chili's kind of tomatoey to me, I think, a little bit. Tomatoey? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Still decent. I think it's tomato. I don't know what to say. It's good, though. Mm hmm. Man, I'll tell you. Mm hmm. I'm going to tell you right now. Um. Okay, right now what? I'm telling you right now. Um, what's I trying to say? No, no. Um, what did I say just before that? You were saying something about. Um, I forgot what I was trying to say. I did too. Holy I said it takes to me. Oh, you, oh, we were talking about Tyson fights and stuff. Mm-hmm. It'll be over. Oh. No, 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 no. That was something I was trying to say. I don't remember y'all. The brain. The brain that went. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So for the longest time, I was doing keto without working out at all. And so I started working out. My appetite is through the roof right now. Ah. Uh. My appetite is just through the roof. Because I wasn't eating at first. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was eating. Mm-mm. And I was satisfied. Mm-mm, y'all. I honestly was. He was eating very little. I was eating like 1,500 calories a day. When you're doing that keto. Weight. When you're doing that keto, it does get to the point where I it's just home very, uh, you, get, you get full quicker. Some of y'all do the keto thing. Y'all say y'all stomach shrink or something. And it doesn't make you hungry as often. He will eat a little bitty pizza and be like, I'm so, he'll be full for five, four or five hours. And I'll be yeah, like, that's I mean, not normal. I just wasn't hungry like that. He can that. go through the whole day without eating. Because, A, I think I wasn't hungry for a number of reasons. But he ate though. Number one, oh yeah, I would eat. But, but I wasn't hungry for a number of reasons. Like, number one, um... Number one, I think the number one reason is COVID, right? We're really not going nowhere and doing nothing. There's not a lot of moving going on. So I'm sitting mostly at my desk Magnet. doing work all day long. And and so there's like not a lot of exercise. You know, like you're not you're not moving around like you used to move around. And so it just I don't know, I just wasn't I was I was content and I was losing weight just by diet. And then I decided I wanted to, you know, start bulking up a little bit. I got the kids coming, and I want to, I want to get them on the workout regimen. We are gonna try to beef it up, and then she want to join in. I so. want to work on my legs. My thighs are so thick, y'all, so big. And I want to work on my booty. Well, not really. I don't need a bigger booty. I just want to tone it up, y'all. That's it. I think I'm about full. I just want to taste this strawberry um, thing and I'm done. I'll mm-hmm. keep my wings for later. I'm my strawberry. You are? I don't know how many I ate. Six or seven. Not that. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I've been eating since this morning. <laughs> You've been eating since mm-hmm. this morning? What you mean? What you eat this morning? I oh, had breakfast. The- breakfast. And then I had the, I think those that's a snacks good on the plane. And... This is a strawberry, y'all. Ooh. Mmm. Strawberry heat. You get the, you, you taste the heat? Mm-hmm. 
Now, if the heat ain't there, that ain't fair. Yeah, he just mouth. Mmm. Chicken. That wings are good. And you don't sit it out in there or nothing. Mm -mm. Let me get all of the windows are boarded up. <laughs> it's funny, y'all. But it's not for. It's not because of writing and all that stuff. It's right. the decor. Mm hmm Well, you got to you gotta state that these days. Mm-hmm. Oh, Because yeah. the boards are on the inside of the windows, not on the outside. Right. But don't look like that window. Um, the window is broken. It is. Where? On that. The windows is broken on the side, outside. Mm-mm. They look like it. I think that's a reflection. You see. Mm-mm. Uh, not broke. Okay. Mm -mm. Anyway. That's, just a, that's just a decor. That's how they have it. Y'all seen it? It, it looked like somebody came in and, you know. Bando means a uh, robber, ain't it? I don't know. Go Vango. I don't know what it means. I know what bandit is. What is a bandit? Is that a robber? Mm -hmm. Somebody that, yeah, makes off with your stuff. That looks like a bando. That's probably short for bando. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Don't give me the line. I don't know. We could be wrong. Mm-hmm. They got a lot of old records in there. I oh, man, the tapes. The tape, cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. They take you back. Record player. This actually tastes like strawberry. They do? Mm-hmm. It's good, y'all. Isn't it from Detroit? Get the crack wings. They must be. It says Detroit Tonys. Get the crack wings, y'all. And they six. You get six. Yeah, they got a special. With five. What was it? Y'all saw it on the plate, on the um, menu. Mm -hmm. He showed it's, it. Uh, it was two nine? conies, six wings, and a fry, I think. Mm -mm, one coney. Was it one coney? Mm hmm. I'm being for eight ninety nine or something like that. Mm hmm. Eh. I like the fact that their wings are not huge. Oh, yeah, I like that too. Oh, man. They got normal size wings. I'm telling y'all. I hate wings that has steroids or hormones in them. Them wings be done, they be done age past their limit. They be from no reason. <laughs> they, they, them wings be swole. They been hitting the gym. Mm hmm. Been in there doing a thug fizzle. <laughs> yeah, I don't keep y'all long. I remember those days. What? Going to the laundromat. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna mention that. Did some girl went in there with her whole basket. I said, yep, that was me. Mm, that was me. My most of my early life. Me too. Laundry mat, y'all. I spent a lot of time in laundry mats. <clears throat> Fold your clothes. When I was younger. And you know what? Honestly. I think it's more efficient. You've been washing clothes at home. Wow. Are you done? Because the laundry the, the, is so much bigger. So, like, you can throw mm -hmm. so many more clothes yeah. in there. And the, and the dryers, too. Now, it costs you and, money. Yeah, it costs you money. But it's probably more expensive now. Especially that. when you get them whack dryers. But the fact of the matter is, too, y'all, when, when you're there, you can get the job done because you literally folding all your clothes like at home it's too much distraction you like i fold them later i'll fold them right. later and you big about them later yeah when you get there when you hair they are mm. hot they ain't got no wrinkles especially if you have a hostage huh? you get it done real quick with a hostage Did I say something wrong? nope <laughs> listen what's a hostage <laughs> your kids <laughs> now what about them? I was forced to fold. Mm. Oh yeah, I feel. I listen. What you see, kids out there that's watching this. What you see is being forced to do something. Is actually quite the learning experience. 
that you will take into your adult life. I learned how to fold clothes at the laundromat. That's where my mama taught me how to fold. Put the creases together, you know, fold it over. She made she made it so when you folded clothes, if you wanted to hang them up or keep them folded, they were done in a way that if the creases would form, they were form in the right spots. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you put the seams together, inside first, then outside, shake it out, pants will fall flat, fold it over, keep it. She she did it all, man. What happened to the uh the uh ironing clothes? I know. You still iron your clothes in? Oh yeah, I still iron my clothes. Mm. I said I won't eat all these. I'm eating, eating everything. I'm done. But see, that's that's the thing, though. When you go to the laundromat, because your clothes didn't sit in a laundry basket, they don't come out really overly wrinkled and everything. You know what I'm saying? You folded them right away, right out the laundry mat, uh, laundry, the right out the uh, dryer, while they were still warm. Mm -hmm. So they just fall right into place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I would love to go this laundromat. You got the the um the bando right here. Get some chicken wings. Right. You know we should do that huh? all time. If you got if you got somebody with you, you can go over there and get your nails done. Mm hmm. I'm gonna do my that. I don't know about all that. You can stop over. Not here. in the hood. That was it. Listen. Oh yeah. You know. All your clothes be gone. People be wearing your whole outfit. Be like hey, that look like my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> like danger. What? What? Didn't I just? <laughs> That's go how, in there, all your clothes gone. How well were you from? All huh? it gone, man. They throw it in the bag real quick and leave. Sprint up the street. Yeah, we couldn't leave our stuff either. You couldn't leave your stuff. You couldn't leave your stuff. That's why I said if you had a second person with you, because you couldn't leave. Yeah, but me and Mariah, we was always together, so. Did y'all ever um had a laundry mat wash your clothes? No. Boy, we couldn't afford that. Cost too much, did you? Shoot, you crazy. Tell myself, we barely could afford wash our own clothes. Man, it was crazy when they went up on them prices. Let me tell you what me and Mariah did, did y'all. We used to be like, my and my girlfriend, we still best friends today. Well, she's like my sister. We would literally, we would go to the laundry rack. Mm -hmm. We try to put our, all our clothes in this big old jumbo thing and try to save money so we could have more money to left to go get some candy or some soda, some chips, or get some food to eat because we're going to be in that laundry mat all day. So we knew what to do. We was like, okay, girl, it ain't dried yet. Come on. That's what it didn't ain't work. Dry. That's what didn't dry. work. Dry. You <laughs> wash all the clothes together and then you're going to dry them and that dryer will suck your quarter pile dry. Mm -hmm. That little 30 minutes that they, that it dry full and, mm -hmm. and, and five of it is cooling down and heating mm -hmm. up. Oh, I hate that. You know what I mean? Like, you you, you had to keep and throwing so, quarters at let that Let me thing. tell you something. We would pray. And it happens every time. That somebody would. That somebody <laughs> would have time left over on their dryer. I mean, like, you be, look, like, you be watching. You be waiting for somebody to get their stuff out so you can throw your stuff in there real quick. I like, please. I hope you're going to be all that time. She ain't got to be clothes in there. I know exactly what you're talking about. Man, and it be happening every time, y'all. Man, all I know is I just loved it when they had any kind of arcade game in there. Any kind. Oh, I yeah. didn't really care. You know, because I was a kid, and I didn't really have, like, books and stuff like that to read when I was a kid. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, every, every book, when I was a kid, I think every book that I read was, like, mandatory reading. Of course. Given to me by oh, the school. Oh, I didn't. I, I had a couple of books that I did read, but yeah, you're right. Most of them be mandatory. Yeah, most of it was like, I mean, the books that I read on my own, like nobody read to me, those were all like mandatory reading. And, and I used to, I I really liked reading when I was a kid. I did too. I really As I got older. It. But I got, yeah, I did too. But I no. still like it better today than watching a movie. Because your imagination is so much more powerful than the movie that it takes you so many different places and it impacts you so much more. And if it's a page turner. Oh, yeah. Boy, See, that let keep me tell you coming back. I used, to, I used to be Christian. Like, I, I read the Bible. And the, I think the Bible, the, green, the girl with the green hair. And I read uh, Divine Revelation of Hell. Those are my first real true books. But let me tell y'all, the Divine Revelation of Hell... Oh yeah, I, I read that was a page that turner. was a page 
turner. That's the first book I had introduced my husband to. Like that was a page turner, not for not for the reasons you might think. Shoot, you trying to figure out where you was going after that? Like, mm -hmm. what need to get my life together? That book, man. That book. Y'all remember you, that Mar Mary J. Baxter? Yeah, that 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 book will make you get yourself the gala. For real, for real. You'll think twice about treating people crazy, mm. hating people, man, you, unforgiveness, uh, uh, adultery, all of that, adultery, fornication. You'll be thinking about the people you think that you done put on pedestals and you think that they, you know, they in heaven for sure. Oh, for sure, they going to heaven. Right. You find out, right. man, Ooh, that may not be the case. And so it really makes you, you know, think about how your life. You, yeah, but it's like you, you have to really, yeah, it's the way you walk, right? Yeah. You have to think about your individual walk because you don't know and you cannot and possibly you know what person. Be thinking about anybody else right, in terms because, of like, you know, criticizing them because, man, I'm going to tell you, you'll be surprised at the stuff that'll keep you from getting in. Right. And you'll you be know surprised what I mean? in your own life. Right, and you'd be surprised how many times how merciful God is that He will let you allow you to accept Him as His Savior on your deathbed. That's some severe mercy because you That's know what? Mercy. Not everybody gets a deathbed experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people are here today, gone. Some people are shot instantly and killed. Some people are in accidents and they just in seconds they're gone. You know what I mean? So, so you don't always get that opportunity because people say all the time, well. You know, I'm not, I, I, I can't live that life. I, I'm getting saved on my deathbed. Well, you may not get that opportunity. They always say that. You know? I've seen young people. Yeah, I you, just I just say, Lord, forgive me before I even uh, close my eyes. Well, you think you're going to be thinking about that? Right. Yo, but it's not going to be thinking about uh, God clinging, coming to my life. Clinging to life, for real. You're going to be so trying to hold on to everything that you have that, you know. You ain't gonna be trying to think about that. And try you, to you. They your say life, they say your, they life, say your flashes. life flashes before you. It's out of my brain. Yeah, they do. But they said that's the true experience. People that do, they say you literally go through your life stages, and when you was a baby, when you was a born, oh, when you right. was a toddler, to see that. I wonder. I wonder how true that is. I know they say that. I wonder how true that is. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do that one. Do you have an empty container that I can put this stuff in so I can close my no. container? You ain't got one. But uh. Do you know? I do, baby. Do you do? Oh, yeah. You ain't even know. I do, do, do. I don't eat my fries. I should mm -hmm. shame. I put the ketchup on them fries. And then ketchup. And I'm full as a tick on the dog. And the dog wants to. And this in Atlanta right now, y'all. It's that weather. You go watch you a good movie. Get you in a bed. Get cozy. My, I love fall watch weather. Watch you some. It's so I'm nice out here, though. Guy. This ain't fall. It's fall, girl. This is spring. This is not well. It could be spring. You too. know, you can walk. Let me say, if you was from, if you was from the alien too. part from Mars, with the aliens. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Where and you're you going came with to this. visit Earth. Uh huh. Where are you going with this? <laughs> Where if you was you an going? alien and you came to visit Earth, you'd be like, "Wow, it's very warm out here. It's very warm out here." That's how they talk, the aliens. Oh my God! <laughs> I don't know what. Has happened to it you. It's very warm out here. It's very warm out here. You've been abducted before? Mm, yeah. I think I am an alien. Oh, okay. That's why I act so weird. You an alias. Right. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm an alias. <laughs> she an alias. A alias. Anyways, you not from here. It's you are an alias. Car, man. It's very hot in this car, and I'm finna just I'm go. I'm burnting up. You burnting up. up? Yeah, I'm burnting yeah, up. Yeah, we finna start time out because it's 29, 22, 23, All right. Yeah. Anyways, y'all love y'all. Stay safe, be blessed, stay blessed, and that's what it is today, y'all. Yeah. Love life and thank work on the rest. And thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all try out the bendo. I'm telling y'all, there's some good food. Bando, but you know, bando. it's black owned. Let's yeah. support our business, I promise you. And stop trying to get a cut. Ooh, can I have two wings for, for, for five for three dollars? If you give me two, I'd <laughs> sell it. It's such a give me extra five. That's from Fridays, ain't it? Yeah. He said, he's... just pay the money, y'all. I don't know he if that said, was it was or not. Friday. He said, how about I give you how this? About for I give you 10 cents? They always try to split. Oh, they're trying to get. Oh, we always try to get something for free from our own businesses. But dang, I'm like, dang. Y'all be asking Nike to come in. Give me a pair. Give me one shoe, my left shoe for this. And then the other shoe just give me. You don't, you don't do that. Yeah. 
That's just give me idiot. this. Give me. Oh, uh, I just be like, wow, y'all bogus. Yeah. Some people. But Some most, people, not everybody. majority of the people. A lot of people. A lot. A majority you know, of the. I meet a lot of people that black just folks are that very really interested in supporting black supporting owned businesses. Supporting black owned businesses. It's so true. It's a lot. It's 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 a lot. It's it's a lot. I mean, in terms of like people that we are around. Yeah. We we really are big on supporting black owned businesses. We are. When it comes to that stuff. I mean, um, when we have a chance to patronize, you know what I mean. If we're in the neighborhood or something like that. We 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 support. Well, it just we just want to say it's very important to support your own because you have you see a lot of me and my husband was talking about this. You see a lot of people like that Asians or you know. Uh, Jews, well, they support their businesses to no end. They ain't, they ain't buying a, a a dime, a penny, a, a a a product out of no other businesses but they own. They go yeah. to over yonder to travel to get some groceries and they own little group. It's time to start building Black Wall Street. It's like, dang, we don't For do real. that. We be like, nope, we gonna support this right That's now. That's what we trying to do. It's just time to start building Black Wall Street back up. It's a lot. You know what? It's a lot Ouch. of people that don't know nothing about that. Like it never ever existed, but it did. It did, and 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 the thing is that we have to. We can collectively do that, but we have to organize around that. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. yeah, we can definitely do it, and we got enough money, man. You know what? We got enough money, and just in our communities. I mean, you come down here to the A. And and that's what that's one of the things I love about Atlanta. What I love I about Atlanta after it. after traveling, you know, to, to different states, especially you know affluent states. You know, you go to New York, you go to Florida, Cali. you go to Cali, you got you all these places where you know a lot of people have money. You go to Vegas or whatever. When you come to Atlanta, you see the same things. Like when I'm on the streets of, of California, I'm gonna see Lambos, I'm gonna see Bentleys, I'm gonna see Rolls Royce, and all that other stuff. When I come to Atlanta and I see those same things, the difference is 90% of the time is black people driving it versus being in other, you know, versus the variety that you might get in other. And I really take, you know, some, it, it's, it, it, I, I love that. I love that. We love that. We love that mm -hmm. because it's just, it's, it is motivating. And it's, you know what, it's something for our culture our people to look up to and say you know what they did it we can do it they did it i can do it you know what i'm saying like in any situation you don't have to be a certain type of thing you don't have to be an athlete you don't have to be a, a rapper you don't have to be anything you can be everything that's what i like about it because everybody out here just like doing whatever they're doing and nah. it's a lot of black and black owned businesses and a lot of black owned restaurants mm -hmm. and it's like it's so reminds me amazing. like houston too yeah like texas yeah you know it just reminds me of places where you can really thrive and grow and be somebody you could be somebody anywhere you at, but it's just like we have so much more um, connective tissue to use like a, you know, bodily term, but like connection to our own down here. You know, it's just very, it's very. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. I feel like I'm at home over here. Like it's no yeah. feels like awkward. Like, oh, if you didn't know. Because we just grew up feel, like that. Right. Sometimes you feel when I'm talking about when I go visit other states, like we have been a lot oh, yeah. of state cities. We travel a lot. And so when I'm at some place, I'm like, man, I can't wait to get home. It's don't feel yeah. something ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Just don't feel it's a disconnect. But it when is. you come to Atlanta, it's like, oh, home. I feel you like. You know, I remember, um, I remember Pastor told me one time, Ooh. he said, he said when he went to Africa, mm -hmm. he went to Africa and he just said it feels so different. Oh, yeah. He said from the motherland. <laughs> and, and one of the guys that was, you know, taking him on a tour or whatever. He's like, it's because you're home. Uh, and I, and we have to experience. I have to experience that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did say that. You know, but he said that. And it, it's, just, it's, something, it's just something about being around your people. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not. It don't take anything away from any other culture, any any other people group. It just is what it is. You you know that you are comfortable and you can say and do and be who you are. Not to say that you can't do that anywhere else in the world. It's just that you're comfortable with it, and comfortability is it's some it's tangible. 
Mm-hmm. It's tangible. You can feel it. Mm-hmm. You really can. You can feel it. You can feel it. Like, you, you know how you just you just sit and talk, stop and talk? I, I'm a talker, y'all. I like talking to people. Like, uh, you know, if I meet you on the street, we'll talk, we'll chat. I don't have to know you. She like that, too. But I don't have to know you. And I remember this guy was in New York. I remember the guy in New York. I was standing outside a hotel. This guy in New York, uh, he came up to me. And he was like, man, let me, can I just highlight you for a second? I was like, yeah, man, you know, what's up? And so he literally just went into his whole story. Remember I told you about um, his father had passed away and his um, sister, half sister, was mad because they didn't get money. Remember I told you this whole oh, story? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I anyway, say, well, I forgot to say. So anyway, this story. guy talked to me for about half hour 40 minutes outside it wasn't the it wasn't the hottest day either it was probably like 50s 60s a little bit but we were just sitting there talking and i was just listening you know what I'm i was letting him vent like, yeah i was just letting him and vent. he wanted to vent and he just, all he wanted to do was vent and he just told me Ain't man i just crazy, need somebody y'all. to vent too. sometimes you do have people strangers come up to you and want to just like let me just talk to you you are you a person that i ain't got no connection with mm. you can't share my story with no you know like saying yeah i know such a so and so because you don't know nobody don't know about about it you don't know nobody but that was instantly the safe to go to. instantly like we just were sitting there talking mm-hmm. and just connecting like mm-hmm. like brother to brother yeah you know what i'm saying it, right. it wasn't it, i didn't know that dude from adam but mm-hmm. we were just connecting and, and that, that's the thing you have you need is that people. you have that instant connection mm-hmm. because you have you share a common struggle i guess and you share a common Sometimes a common upbringing, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. But there's just a common struggle throughout life experience. And it's like, he was telling me, you know, what all he had went through and overcame and stuff like that in his life. And I was just like, I was like, man, I'm proud of you, man. Don't let this, don't let this get you down. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Remember I told you he was talking to his sister on the phone. Hey, he got to hang up. He got to hang up. He she heard like half a, of his venting session. She heard his whole... She heard at least half of it. I'm going to tell you that right and now. And he was talking to him. And, and he like, was going ham on her, too. I was y'all, like, can y'all imagine somebody talking about you like a boop, 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 like <laughs> danger. And you was talking to a like, stranger. I promise you. He's like, when oh. he looked down at that phone and it was still connected, and he said, hello. I said, it's a wrap, bro. <laughs> 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 you in trouble, like but you know what? Smartphones. But it is what it is. He got. He was able to get whatever he needed to get off his chest. And I, uh, I know it was no good one when he saw her again. Listen, I don't know if he ever no saw her again. I don't know if he ever wanted to. You know what I'm saying? That was, was the that was, it was a, law, wasn't it? It was a like a a strained relationship. It was a it was a half sister. They shared the same oh, father. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, different mothers, right. and she never wanted to have anything to do with um, his father oh, okay. when he was alive. He was the one taking care of him, going to the hospital right. and spending last days right. and all that other stuff. And she never wanted to have anything to do with him while he was alive. But then when he passed away, she wanted to get some money. And she was upset that he didn't leave them. He didn't leave her nothing. He didn't leave her nothing. He left it all to hit to hit this guy's mother, and and him. And so they, you know, they did. Now he came into a substantial amount of money. You know what I'm saying? And he did give her some money. I think he said he gave her five hundred thousand dollars. But she was not happy with that, was she? She was not happy with it. Because they had more. He had a lot of money. And um, she just wasn't happy with that. And so, and then and then what they did, though, is they split it up between her and her three kids. So she had three kids, and they wanted to make sure they took care of the grandkids and everything. So that means she only got, probably got 200 I, I don't. Yeah, it was 200 it was 200. <laughs> it was 200, 200 and 100 and 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Yep, that's what it was. And the kids can't get it until yep. they get to a certain age. Yeah, it was, it was so just like that. It but was like, it was like, so, and dad don't be like. But the thing about it was that her dad didn't, she didn't have nothing to do. They didn't have a relationship like that. So he didn't leave her anything. And it was his mom that decided, okay, we're going to make this a little, this, this right. And she decided to give them 
the the five hundred thousand. And when they went ham on her, that's what made the man upset. Is because you're not gonna keep having my mama all upset about this whole thing when she trying to do the right thing and give you something that wasn't even given to you by the person who owned it that that you should have had a relationship with, but you refused to have a relationship with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like. I was just like, wow. I would listen to this whole man story. And just so... And my husband come back telling me this whole story. I'm like, Danger, what did he tell you? What did you do? Oh, I had, we had That's a whole, whole life conversation. Story. Oh, there's so much more to the story, y'all. I Way promise more. you it was like it was like a 30, 40 minute conversation. So much more to the story. And you can't... I don't want to. I'm not gonna share just, all that stuff. They probably you know, know who you are. Oh, I know who he's talking about. <laughs> he talking about me. <laughs> you want that? Yeah, I ain't gonna I go all that. Because you story know what? Happening to me. Sometimes people tell you stuff, and it's not. It's not for you to repeat those things. You know what I'm saying? This part of the story is is, is non consequential to the overall concept of the story. Yeah, but and if everything you start pointing out through. some more, points, oh yeah, I wouldn't tell them. You may they probably somebody may figure it I out. I wouldn't tell nothing about what he went through in his life. I'm and glad stuff, you know. Like that. One thing about me and my husband, we are not those people. You tell us something, and we gonna go down to the ground. Let me yeah. tell you, we're not gonna sit up there and gossip about your stuff to nobody else and be like, yeah, guess what? So and so. so. I ain't we ain't doing because we don't want nobody to do that's us. That stuff just. If I come by and you, I expect that to stay between me and you. Listen, y'all, I'm a vault when it comes to that stuff. I, I think I think it's because I don't and you a vault too. I think it's because I don't know. We I I don't I can't really say I grew up like that, but being in corporate America, I was always privy to information that I couldn't share. Right. And then being in the church, there was always things being an elder and a pastor that you I couldn't, couldn't share. share. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because there was stuff going on in, in in the lives of members and it wasn't nobody else's business. And so I'm, I've just never been the but one to share. You wouldn't want nobody to do that to you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I would Why would you, you know what I'm saying? What, whatever you uh, issue yeah. out or do, it's going to come back on you, would you. And you put yourself right. in that person's shoe. Now, if I I was telling you this and I was confiding in you. Would you want somebody to go blast your stuff no. everywhere? No. no. That's between me and you. I shared that with you. <laughs> and then let me tell you something. Let me tell you how her, I was going to say because I was trying. I was looking at him like that because this man is so tight and bold. He went to a court, y'all. He went to court uh, to court yeah. for a, a, a case. I was right? on a jury. He was on a jury. That man didn't tell me nothing that was going on in that jury case. And I still don't know the day. They I've been married to him for 22 years. They told me not to tell. They told me, listen, when you're on the jury, they tell you take, I told you later, but I told you. No, no, you, you didn't tell I me. I didn't tell you. You didn't tell me nothing. You said, I was sworn to secrecy. I cannot tell well, nothing. You can't even say my wife. nothing. It is what it is. They told I you not, like, you cannot well, talk about the case at I all, I can't period. talk about it. And you know what? And I said, baby, I I'm not going to say nothing. I nothing. never want to be a juror wife. again. I never want to be a juror. Don't call me for nothing. I don't want to ever be in that situation. Day, that. Did I, I still say, don't feel like I did. What if, what I this man still was innocent? don't feel like uh, that process was worked for, right. <laughs> no. Don't ever call me for that. Ever. Because they don't tell you. They don't tell you what sentencing is like. They they tell you, oh, you get the option of finding them guilty for this, or this, wh which one of the two, and it's and it's like, okay, well, I don't, you know, the the evidence is what it is. Yeah, okay, I think he might have done it. Whatever, I think he done it. Okay, everybody comes to the conclusion. Yeah, we think he done it. We think he done it. Boom, boom, boom. How? Why? Then they come back and they tell you, oh, he about to get twenty five to life. I'm like, for that. Like, he gonna get that for that? No, don't have me on this no more. I'm not sending nobody to prison for that much time for, for nothing like crime. for this little stuff that y'all talking about. Don't have me on that. I get it. You trying to jury up here to find somebody guilty. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Sunday Night
love, beat love, beat love three times. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Beat love, beat love, beat love three times. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.